Welcome to another episode of uh, Tasting With. I'm here with Mike Anderson. Um, he's a young winemaker in the Valley with his own label um, called MTGA. There you go. Am I saying right? That is right. MTGA. Okay. Some people go MTGA or MGMT, but that's the band, not the wine. Okay. Uh, but yeah. MTGA, which means? It actually are my uh, initial, Michael Todd Gustav Anderson. Uh, it's my dad's name, Todd, my grandpa's name, Gus, who were both winemakers in the family before I was. And so you're, like you just mentioned, you are local to Napa Valley? Yes. Okay, um, it seems to be a running theme in these things. Yeah, um, my, my parents and grandparents moved here back in the early 80s to get into the wine side of things. And at that time, my dad was a geologist who was working in gas and oil in Texas. Uh, my grandfather was actually an orthodontist uh, before they even had a school for orthodontia, which was a little scary, but okay. <laughs> decided to make his transition to wine. <laughs> Um, and my, my grandfather was a huge Francophile, loved everything French, kind of had this picture of you know, getting into the wine industry at some point. And this was, you know, early 80s, so Napa is just kind of back up on its, you know, surge into the late 80s and 90s again. Uh, so they ended up purchasing 40 acres of land out in Con Valley, uh, just out towards Lake Hennessy off of Rossi Road and started Anderson's Con Valley Vineyards. Ah, of the first vintage of which was 1987, and then it was... Uh, Gone through a few iterations of different labels and offshoots uh, from my dad, like Ghost Horse Vineyards or Trespass Vineyards or Eagles Traces, and a few little, few little branches off of that as well. Cool. But now yeah. this guy, of course. So. Yeah, so it's very strong roots in the valley. Yes. Yeah. yeah very much so. Any, uh, any like fun stories from when you were growing up? Or? Um, it was interesting growing up. Uh, being a very small family business at the time and into the early 90s, I mean, we as a family you kind know, of did all the work out there. It was everything from planting vines to doing the frost protection and making sure the fans were on at, you know, two or three o'clock in the morning. Um, it was, you know, work shoveling out tanks and helping out with fermentations at the winery or in our garage. It was a little bit of everything during yeah. the day. So little did we know how kind of important all those little details were at the time. But it was, yeah, definitely kind of full force into the wine industry very, very early on. Yeah. And your dad, like you said, Todd Anderson, yes. so pretty big <laughs> reputation in the yeah, valley. He's, he's got, yeah, <laughs> uh, depending on who you ask, a good or bad reputation. Sure. He's definitely, uh, for those that know him as the Todd, that persona definitely comes out every once in a okay. while. Um, he, he definitely is, you know, for those that haven't met him, you know, for he does command a room and a presence, but he's also one of, and I'm obviously a little biased, but he definitely is one of the just the easiest going guys i mean whether it is his ghost horse wines or you know whatever's on the table it's he just wants everybody to enjoy themselves and yeah. uh, that is kind of rule number one in his book is drink what you like and that's that's about it so i uh, try does a really good job of sticking true to that all right and is that what you've kind of done with them gga that is all right. uh, and it's really the reason why i picked the two varieties that i started with which were Riesling and merlot well, the merlot came first actually uh, two varieties that just they're well known but you know not necessarily have the best reputations it's either merlot not being as good as cab or uh -huh. Riesling being too sweet or some iteration thereof um, so kind of wanted to champion a couple things that were, you know, not off the beaten path, but that could use a little extra love. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Um, which one do you want to start with? I will start with the reason. All right. Think, cool. Well. So this is a uh, bone, me. Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, bone dry style Riesling. Uh, comes from a little vineyard actually that Napa wines over in uh, Sonoma. Oh, yeah. Farms. Okay. So right at three corners where Highway 121 hits on the dry wall there. Uh, they have a few acres of Riesling that they've been sourcing from. I was lucky enough to kind of stumble upon it in 2013. So this is the 2014 vintage. Okay. Uh, officially. Um, 12, 7 alcohol, so really crisp, clean, wow. refreshing. Uh, let the fermentation go all the way through, keep it in some stainless steel, and don't filter or refine it. So it's got kind of okay. good, good, interesting things going on. Good bones in there. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. I'm excited. Oh, that's Riesling. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the 13 even right now, it's getting like to that really, and I, one of the reasons I love Riesling is it has that geeky, like petrol -y, yeah. y kind of thing. And it, the 13's finally really starting to show that. This is starting to come along too. Yeah, I like it. Ah, oh, it's awesome. I wish Riesling, like, so I love Riesling, obviously most moms mm -hmm. love Riesling. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I, I would love for like the reputation like Merlot and like you're trying to do to like start moving from this Riesling is a sweet wine, which sometimes it is, yeah. to like Riesling is the most aromatic, crazy thing in a glass that you can possibly imagine. Oh, totally. But always when it's made right and when it's um, when it's rightly correct, like I suspect it is, um, and I, it smells like it is always at like petrol, diesel, mm -hmm. uh, peach, apricot thing going on and it's... Gosh, it is so distinctly <laughs> Riesling. I'm so excited. Yeah, and that's one. I mean, the reason I love Riesling is that from the dry side to the super sweet side, it's so versatile as, mm -hmm. as a grape. I think one of probably the most versatile out there, just because it can hit every point in the spectrum. Whether you're looking for that, you know, you know, sweet like Trockenbier and Auslaus type of like German dessert wine, or if you're looking for something really crisp and clean, um, it can fit anything um, yeah it's and it's just really fun to work with in that, in that regard to kind of figure out where you want it to be on that scale so germany is definitely your inspiration for i'd, I'd say so uh, that is kind of where i wanted this to be i mean here in the valley you know i looked at producers of course you know, the has there mm -hmm. montalena stony hill was kind of my benchmark as far as you know, sure. really great dry white wines go here uh, and that's really where i wanted this model to be was That is not your grandma's Riesling. Nope. Wow. That is not. Mission accomplished. That has really <laughs> beautiful acid on it. Thank you. So what did you, when did you pick? How did you accomplish this? Uh, this was, uh, it was an earlier pick than usual. Hmm. Uh, this vineyard is, in its spot tends to be a little bit of a warmer vineyard site, so it can get pretty ripe pretty quick. And it's trying to make sure that it comes in at a time where you, you're getting all this flavor and fruit characteristics that you want, but maintaining that high acidity and not letting it get overripe and kind of lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. So it, I try and bring it in right as soon as, soon as it hits like 21 degrees breaks, I'm like, okay, it's almost time. And from there, it's just making sure that it stays clean, try and keep oxygen off it as much as possible so it doesn't oxidize too much during the process. A very quick pressing and then into stainless steel right away where we're trying to do just a nice cool, slow fermentation on it. Yes. Um, and make sure that it does go all the way through so that there is no residual sugar yeah. hanging about. Which, you know, with a low alcohol like this, it's pretty easy. So let it just do its thing. Oh, it's clean, it's crisp, it's aromatic. It's, it is more old world German in style than I would consider for California, mm -hmm. which I like. But you know, there's, you still have that like ripe mid palate. It oh, yeah. sets the, you know, it balances it. How many vintages of Riesling have you done? Uh, this is the second. Okay. Um, I actually, unfortunately, didn't make any in 2015. There was a slight chance the vineyard was going to get torn out, but I found out this oh. year that it didn't. So I'm going back to the same vineyard source. I'll be using it and doing it again for 2016. So this is the last vintage of Riesling for now. The new one will be coming out in spring, right. probably April, May, about right now. It's coming back. Yeah, it'll be making its comeback. So. Are you a one-man team doing this thing? Uh, it's primarily it's myself and my girlfriend Brittany that do all the work. Nice. She's kind of my my assistant, my okay. manager, so to speak. Um, that and a few friends who have grac or graciously or foolishly lent a hand in the cellar. Um, they they're like, hey, uh, let me help out. I'd love to learn more. I'm like, you got it. <laughs> I don't want to lift barrels. All <laughs> That's time. true. People, you know, people always think winemaking is this like very um, fancy like thing yeah. to do and. When they get into like the nitty gritty of it, it they're really regretting that decision to come at five o'clock in the morning and pick grapes or yep. or rack or yep. filter. Or I still have one more friend, uh, and it's it's one of my favorite stories. He 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 wants to come back and help out again, but it was we were just doing simple rackings on some of the merlots right after fermentation, so all the heavy leaves and sediments still at the bottom <laughs> of the barrel. And instead of and this was my fault actually, I instead of turning the pump off, I turned it up, and all the leaves just went all over. So he had a whole bunch of purple on. I'm like, well, welcome to the cellar. And <laughs> It's in your station, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Wow. Pretty much. That's a good friend if you came back. Yeah, oh, he totally did. Foolishly, like I said. But, wow. Yeah. You want to move into Merlot? Yeah, sure. Might as well, cool. since we're talking about yeah. yeah. So this is really what got the project started in 2010. And it was this little Merlot vineyard just south of town here in St. Helena. And uh, the owner of the vineyard, the vineyard had just changed hand, actually. And they there were a couple contracts that were up in the air that didn't like, go through. And they were just trying to make sure that the grapes got picked instead mm -hmm. of rotting from the vine, basically. So they, I got in touch with me, said, come out and just pick whatever you want. We'll figure out pricing and or whatever later. Um, since we're just revamping this vineyard, we don't really know what we're doing just right. yet anyway. So we just want to make sure it gets picked. But it's Napa fruit. Yeah, it's Napa fruit. So, which was surprising. Number one, it made no sense to me when he said that. But I was right. like, okay, I'm totally done and done. Done and done. Yeah. Um, so I went out there a couple days. I was working at Rain Vineyards and Cellars at the time and borrowed a half ton bin from them and put it in the back of my 
stepdad's truck and just drove out there and after two nights got about a ton of fruit. Uh, got that all fermented, pressed off, and was in barrel for about 16 months. And that's when I started tasting people on it. And they immediately started asking, oh, it's, you know, it's pretty good. What is, what's the label going to be? And what are you going to do with it? And had no answer for it. And so we got the label designed with a friend of mine who lives down in Napa and got it bottled up and very quickly sold out of it in about a week and was like, Whoa. <laughs> and didn't really know what to do with it. It's a good response. It was a great response. <laughs> I, was, I was a little bit shocked and odd because it was still early in that phase. We were like, God, I just hope it's good. Right. And it, it just completely was surprising. So in 2011, I had actually brought in a little bit more fruit and same thing in 2012, just as I was getting the 2010 kind of out and about, yeah. which was a good choice. It turns out. Wow. So, it it so how did you, how did you come? I mean, that's a, that's really fast to get mm -hmm. to sell all that wine. Yeah. How did you do that? Uh, it was largely my Christmas card list, basically, as, as I was talking to friends about it. It's a lot of Christmas letting, cards. Yeah, it's a lot of Christmas <laughs> cards. It was a lot of handwriting. Yeah. I still remember the hand cramps, but uh, it was, uh, just kind of just slowly spreading the word of mouth whether it was social networking or uh, just chatting people up I mean I was posting you know kind of the progress on mm -hmm. you know on Facebook and Twitter and things and just wasn't really thinking much of it but it, it was enough to really kind of be that spark to ignite the fuse and it just rocked out from there that's awesome yeah so people like followed you as you went through this whole mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, everything from the, I don't know what I'm doing, and I just have a couple of barrels of wine in the cellar, to the labels designed, and I just got my license through the California ABC, and be ready because it's coming this fall. That's uh, so cool. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's amazing to see. And so now, are you still pretty active on like social media and like, I, showing your progress? I try to be. Showing I'm not it. as much as I should okay. be. Like, there are, it's even been like a few days since I posted everything. I'm like, oh, God, i got to remember to, yeah. to do, do something. Um, but yeah, try to be, and it's just kind of a direct contact for me, my yeah. clients and friends and everybody just yeah. to know what's going on. You know, I do the same thing. Yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, what is your handle? We'll link it uh, oh, in it the is, video. Uh, at MTGA Wines. At MTGA Wines. All okay. Words. So we'll yeah. link it. It's probably somewhere here and then also in the bio <laughs> below. So you should follow. And that's yep. Instagram, Twitter. Instagram, uh, Twitter. There is an underscore in between those. Okay. Uh, and then, we'll right. yeah, and Facebook is MTJ. Well. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. then you should follow. That's really cool that you do that. Yeah. I love that. I always like say that some, like there's, there's so much to do with winemaking mm -hmm. and like, you know, I don't really ever get into that stuff because it's, unless I'm talking to someone about it, yeah. but like to see the process of, especially someone young like yourself of going from like, Hey, let's make wine to like, Hey, let's try wine and and this. I made this. Oh yeah, that is a very cool process to see. Yeah, I mean, it's a blast. Yeah. And you know, I really like to try and demystify it. And kind of like you said, there's kind of this uh, this mist of I don't know if it's you know luxury or pomp and circumstance sure. that kind of encompasses the wine world. And it's it's fun to kind of break down that wall and bring people into it and be like, no, look, it's it's yeah. a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. Yeah. But there's so many cool little things that you get totally. to do as part of this process. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's taste it. Yeah, low. dig it. So All this right. is the uh, the 2012 vintage, 100% uh, Merlot, okay. which usually surprises people because um, there are a few great Merlots okay. in this valley. Uh, very few of them are 100% Merlot. There's mm -hmm. usually a little bit of Cabernet in there or something blended in just to kind of you know beef up the shoulders a little bit because Merlot tends to be a little fleshier and yeah. kind of easier going. Yeah. Mm. That is a great Merlot. Yep. What was your, um, wow, I don't think I'm gonna let this finish for a while. <laughs> yeah, this is one just opened these about an hour ago, so they've had okay. a little bit of air time, but definitely for the 12, it's tasting right now, it gets a little wow. better as, as it sits around. Um, at least from my perspective, Merlot has gotten a very bad reputation over yep. the past, I don't know, 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, one that we have been trying to eradicate. Yeah. Um, to like minimal avail, but like, I think also because it has not been made in such a long time mm -hmm. and made well and it's kind of been the thing on the back burner, but like this is your this is your bread and butter. Yep, this is this is the flagship realistically. Yeah. And it's when you have someone who and I, I don't know if this is true for a lot of people, but it always to me Merlot well, a lot of times tastes like they had Merlot that they were blending into mm -hmm. another blend or you know, into their cap program and they had extra Merlot laying around so they bottled it and and there wasn't it was never a focus. 
Um, it still tasted good, but mm -hmm. it wasn't like as good as it could be because it was meant to be blended and done with something else. And so when you have somebody who really focuses their time on it and does it well, it really, really shines, but it's a matter of putting that time. Yeah. You know, often people are like, oh, I want a, I want a cab that doesn't really have a lot of tannin and it's really plushy and soft. And I'm like, they describe all of these things that are just not <laughs> cab. I'm yeah. like, well, have you tried a Merlot? And usually, no, I don't, I don't drink Merlot. And, yeah. you know, eventually we kind of get to the point where it's like, well, maybe this, listen, if you don't like it, I'll drink it right. myself. Um, but it's, you know, not that this doesn't have tannin, but it's, it's soft and it's supple and the fruit's a little bit more ripe and round mm -hmm. and, um, it's so perfumed and aromatic and pretty. It's just like, mm -hmm. it's like Cab's prettier little sister. It kind of is. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just a fun, another fun grape to work with. Uh, and trying to let Merlot be itself, not trying to make like a Cab Lovers Merlot that's super extracted and just kind of, those always seem out of whack to me because it's just right. not where the varietal ever wants to go. With right. I'm trying to push it around a square peg through a round hole. <laughs> Uh, and you know, trying to do you know very light on the gauging side of things, mostly mostly uh, once and twice use barrels just to give it like a nice toastiness, but not heavy handed on it. Uh, trying to again harvest it a little bit earlier in general. I mean, it sits right about 14% alcohol year in year out. This is really good. Yeah, this is really really good. <laughs> I am very impressed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, wow. Yeah, you don't often get to taste like winemakers wine and, and have a. Like a great, like you always have a good reaction, but like this is very, like both of these wines are very impressive. Um, you're a young guy, like this is. It's, yeah, it's, you know, it's fun to see where this is gonna yeah. go over the next couple of years. Um, they are already, already added a couple things to the lineup that are in barrel, a little bit of Pinot Noir and some Cab for 2015. So it's definitely getting there. Yeah. Uh, it is just kind of taking those next steps to start, to, or keep that ball rolling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where are we price point wise with these guys? Oh, uh, the Riesling comes in at 32 a bottle. Wow. And the Merlot is 48. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah. Very reasonable. And yep. Um, are they still available on your yes, website? They are available on my website. Uh, folks usually can call me or even Facebook message me or shoot me a yeah. message on Twitter if they have any yeah. questions about them. But what are you like really excited about? Um, bring the Riesling back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but actually the Pinot Noir, uh, that is, if I had to pick a red wine to drink for the rest of my life, that would be it. And that's, it's really my grandfather's love of Burgundy that sucked me into that very right. awesome but expensive world. <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> uh, for gosh. great, great Burgundy and Pinot Noirs from, from this area. Yeah. So. And Burgundy just got devastated. Oh, from that frost that went through. Oh my gosh, so we're not going to see any Burgundy out here. No, between that, well, Loire and Champagne. Right. Too. So yeah, it's going to be a tough year for, yeah. for those regions. But Well, we have your wine to look forward to. That's true. And it, it comes from, I tried to find a nice, very cool vineyard site where it's hard to ripen which yeah. is perfect <laughs> for, for making pinot and it's it's everyone always says it's this really finicky soft skin grape that's a pain you know it's kind of it just is angry at the world the whole time and as soon as you decide to do anything to it in the cellar it immediately gets worse right <laughs> and that is totally true i'm finding out uh, but it's finally now that's been in barrel for you know a few months it's settling down really coming to its own uh, and it's i'm really excited to have that out Awesome. So that, unfortunately, with the yields of 2015 that they were here because of the drought and other things, it's about half as much as I wanted to make, about 75 cases as opposed to 150. But uh, it should be pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you are not drinking your wines, mm -hmm. what are you drinking? Wine-wise or anything? anything? Uh, Man, right? It's either a combination of a good like sour beer. Oh, okay. Um, or cool. anything, or beer made with Britannomyces, because you can't use that in wine, and it's really good. <laughs> uh, well, you can, it's just hard to do in small doses. Um, uh, so yeah, those two in particular, on the beer side of things, or just a good whiskey, could be, you know, mostly um, American, or whiskey, or bourbon, or Irish whiskey. Those, those tend to be in my lineup. Pretty yeah, you have a pretty eclectic palate. I like a little equal opportunity, like consumer. I love yeah. a little bit of everything. Uh, the liquor cabinet is way too full, but for good reason, though, so I have options. Right. Oh, so I have good. a bunch of shoes or something, I guess. I just have a bunch of stuff to drink. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I think that's a very, I'm, I always ask that question because I feel like it's a tell for your style. And like, mm -hmm. you, I think inherently you do make what you like to drink. Yeah. Um, and 
you saying that you like sour ales and your spread does not surprise me in any way <laughs> after not these wines are like funky by yes. any means but there's definitely a, a sense of of place and there's a thoughtfulness and um there's something a little bit different about these wines that i really enjoy mm -hmm. um which you know i don't just tell you that oh yeah yeah uh, that's it's, awesome it, it's yeah it you know as a silly old saying goes it takes a lot of beer to make good wine or whatever beverage you right <laughs> um so yeah definitely try and live by that just to not get you know house palette but also try and keep kind of pushing that envelope of what you can do with a single medium you know as far as like a sure. art form kind of goes what i'll link uh <laughs> everything will be linked so you can find these wines um online and don't be afraid to uh hit mike up on social media Yep, the Twitter or the yeah. Facebook or Instagram is mostly where I do everything. I just post everywhere. So Me Instagram's, too. Yeah, I, know. I love Instagram. I that so much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that is probably the best way to get a hold of me other than probably just a phone call. My cell phone's on the website. You can just drop me a line. You put your cell phone on the website? Yeah. I I'm love that. Cool. It's also in the back of the bottle. <laughs> like it's, You are very accessible. Yeah. Try to be wow. anyway. I, yeah. find, I always find that good for there's so many like small culty ish wine brand brand that like you can't like ever connect with yeah. because they are trying to be like, exclusive. Yes. No, yeah. you're just down the street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking no, some course. time out and tasting me with your amazing wines. I'm so excited to see what happens with this project. I think it's going to be really something special. Thank sure. you very much. Yeah. Mike. Thank you for your time. I'm glad I could come out and share them with you. Yeah. You can check them out. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. You betcha. All right.